have the 3D Connection Space Pilot Pro Ultimate Professional 3D Mouse. It's a nice box there. This is the wired version. I didn't bother with the wireless version because I don't I don't intend on uh, having it as portable. So there's a slight bit of damage on the box there. Let's see what we got. I noticed this doesn't say anything about um, Max, so I'm not sure if it's compatible with Max or not, but it doesn't say anything on here about Max, it's only got Windows and Linux. So I've got Windows 7 on my desktop, Windows 10 on my laptop, I'm going to install this on my desktop, so it's going to be a Windows 7 install, and we'll see how this goes, I'm going to be using this with Blender if you're familiar with that neat neat package in there let's pull off this protector okay okay so the first thing to notice is the uh, how smart it looks look at that well crafted that isn't it very smart and elegant it's got a nice rubber centerpiece there where your hand will be resting and the plastic out, out the parts. These are very uh, high quality plastic and a high quality build is the joyst joystick, is that what you call it? The controller there, let's pull this out. With the USB lead on the end. We've got a screen protector up here on the top to protect the whole top half of where the screen is. So this is the gloss plastic under there. On the back side, we have the logo and the website address a nice tough good quality plastic base and rubber feet there's three at the front there and we got three at the back so you can feel how good quality rubber that is as well by sticking your nail in there it feels grippy and it's not going to move anywhere with six of these things on it so that's good last thing you want is this to be moving around when you're controlling your 3d cursor so let's get the screen protector off. There you go. Just stick that over there. Okay, there's the screen. Nice and shiny. It's like a piano black kind of look to it. Got some top controls there for the screen itself. Yeah, it's a very nice looking thing. You can see the size on it compared to my hand there. So I think it's a, it's a good size too. But that's the main thing you want there in the mid, middle and obviously reaching the buttons on the outer part of it. Okay, so let's try this in practice. I've, put, I've plugged it in, I've installed it, the software and everything. Um, so it's up and running. I have had a little play around with it. I've set these keys up to how I like them. You can set all these surround keys uh, to do whatever you want. They're all kind of, um, they have the macro ability and whatnot. So uh, for those Blender users out there, I've read online that it says you can't change the button configuration within the um, 3D mouse software, which is here. Uh, that is not true. If you go into the the main panel here and you click on properties, um, so the way there, this comes up, and you can click on buttons, for example, and it oh, it's it's actually set to my video capture software. If I went into Blender, there you go, it's, it switches automatically. So I switch to Blender, and I can change the key configurations to whatever I want. So that's how you do that. Um, if I go back then you can just click advanced settings and you can adjust the pan, tilt, zoom and all that kind of functions. So that's how you do it. It says up there clearly what software it's you're currently changing. So whatever software is active, you have to open the software first in order to change it inside of the um, mouse software. But uh, that's nice and easy. 
So you can change the speed. You can got the LCD manager here where you can change what is displayed on your LCD screen. I've only got function keys and RSS feeds. You can choose to have Outlook, Outlook calendar, mail, um, picture viewer, and whatever. You can choose to have any of these um, active on your on the LCD panel or not. I choose not to. But that's me. Anyway, so that's the way you configure it all. And you can also use the trainer software there. And you've got the manual. So this will train you how to use and you know to let you get accustomed to the feel of it. Uh, you've got a viewer, collage, you can bring some pictures in and mess around with them in 3D space. There's a puzzle which I haven't been able to do yet. And obviously registration. Let's have a look at the viewer real quick. So this is just an example. Um, 3D model which you will use your space pilot to practice navigating to be honest it doesn't take that long and especially when you customize it to how you like it um, it's really easy to be surprisingly easy to find your way around just need to adjust the sensitivities I think on certain parts like the rotation you can really fine tune this to how you like it. So we're gonna take a little fly through there now. Without hitting any propellers, there you go. So um so you can play around with that so you can get used to it. So I'll come out of there now and go into Blender itself, which is not even open, yes it is. Okay, so I can rotate around and up and through you can do all the different you got six axis on this so you can rotate while going left and you can go down as well all at the same time as I said it takes a little bit of practice so I've set up my keys to be various things that if you press up here you got the function keys at the top there if you press OK it'll show you this um, section of keys there and it, sh it shows you what they are and there's two different functions for each key one being the short press and one being a slightly longer press which is only about a second long so for example I've got the middle there as being the um, press and play on the animation so if I press that it starts to play and I can stop it by pressing that but if I hold it down, what's it do? It duplicates an object. So this is this object here is selected. So if I hold that for a couple of seconds or a second, it'll duplicate that for me. And I've set this one up here to be X. So if I X that and delete, so it's nice and easy. I got my main manipulator controls there. X well, my my axis controls X, Y, and Z. And over this side, I've um, changed these to be grab rotate size and I got the, the middle one there to be tab so if I had an object selected I can tab there and select what mode I want to go into so it's a matter of setting it up for yourself how you will you know what what kind of configuration is easiest for you I put tab there so I can easily hit it with my thumb button because you obviously if you use blender a lot you know you tab a lot so it's one of the most used buttons probably I've left the fit one. I think that's the only one I left by on its uh, to its default. Because fit, what that does is, if you've selected an object, you click it, it'll center that object. All vertices. So if I was in to go into edit mode and I select that vertice up there, I can hit fit and it goes straight to it. So I thought that was a handy little feature. So I kept that one as it was. I think pretty much all the rest have changed. Obviously, apart from the escape, shift, control, alt, I left them as they are. Um, the plus and minus. I've the, the plus was the T, uh, the end button, so it brings in and out my end menu, and the minus being the T menu, so I can easily click them in and out. So that's that's nice and handy for me. Menu. When you hit the menu in Blender, it brings up the 3D mouse settings. It automatically recognizes this, by the way. Blender automatically recognizes the the software. It has got a a plugin. That's somebody built for it some years ago, so uh, no need to worry about setting up. But you can adjust things within Blender. I've brought my sensitivity down to 0.400 because it's a bit fast on one. Um, kind of flying, really zooming around there. So 
again just experiment find which is um which is more comfortable for yourself when you change this it'll reset every time you start blender up so what you will need to do is to, to actually change it in the user preferences if you go in here and go to input down here you've got the sensitivity there so change that to 0.400 or whatever you like and click save settings so that's it will then stay at that setting every time you open it up so you've got some other options down here you can play around with I'm happy as it is up the top here you've got the buttons this is not a screen on and off and this one just backs it up from the larger oops I pressed something <laughs> screen to the main to the main menu and obviously your I don't know what the arrows are for I guess it's for something else obviously for the mail features again you can have your emails come up here with the outlook features and um, RSS fees I got them there if I turn that on we've got top international news you can click OK and we've got Romanian shepherds protest low on doctor still working in Iraq you know so you can select which one you want to read so let's select that one press OK and it comes up with a bit more if you press this button here it'll bring it up on your monitor screen it'll open up your internet browser oh hang on maybe it's not that button that's just OK ah press OK again sorry and it'll open it up with the Cincinnati Enquirer seems to be the one it opens uh, with the Associated Press and the article in question so that's nice and handy. I can't see me using it a lot, to be honest. I had something similar to this on my Logitech uh, G13 gamepad. Again, didn't use it, so probably not something I will use. But it's a neat little feature to have. Um, so yeah, you can set these keys up to be not only anything you want, but any two things you want. Because all these keys, I think, have, a, have two modes. A quick press and a hold press. Or at least these ones do with the blue marks. Uh, the blue uh, blue bits on them the the blue bit is the secondary function and the gray is the primary function so you can literally set these to be whatever you want these up here switch on and off the different uh, axis if I just switch up to there you can see at the top there you've got green green and red the red is disabled because um, it's just the way I like it again you have to play around which ways you like to use it and it's hard it's I'll leave it to you to um, mess around with that. Each individual have a different look and feel for everything, so I'm not going to uh, recommend any particular thing. So what I've done is I've actually reprogrammed these three buttons to be different things, to be uh, the view button. So if I press that one, it goes to front, that one goes to right, and that one goes to top, so I can use that nice and easily, switching views with my thumb, rather than having to use my numpad. Okay, so where this is really going to come into his own is obviously with sculpting. So we're going to quickly do a little sculpting here. Let's have a look. Do, 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 sculpt mode. So usually when sculpting, you can either have one, um, you know, one view at a time, front, side, back, or you're using the shift key to go around like this all the time. Because with this, it frees uh, your hand up a little bit. It means you can go all the way around at any given time you can even do it live while sculpting so you can go right around there let's just find my tools let's bring that right up so you can <laughs> this is going to be a terrible little face as you can see there <laughs> okay. So you can play around with it. It's going to take a bit of getting used to, I think, but. Yeah, so this is a bit of a messed up face. Looks like a. Something out of a horror film. <laughs> you get the idea, yes? This is where it's going to be very handy, I think, is uh, on the old sculpt s functions here. Very nice. <laughs> that is uh, 
Nice. That's looking quite nasty. Definitely looking like something from a horror movie. So it's good for showcasing as well if you've got your finished model. Let's pretend this is an amazing finished model. You know, before you'd have to scroll in and out and drag and move like this to show somebody your model, just demonstrate. But now you can just free fly around it. And that makes it look much more professionally presented. Okay, so I hope that little introduction f to this space pilot um, is helpful in some way to show you what it can do, what can be achieved, and uh, what it can be used for, how it can be an advantage. And uh, um, it's up to you whether you think it's something that's right for you. It's definitely worth a try. It's beautifully designed, beautifully constructed and built. You can hear the sound of the keys here. So uh, you can tell, usually by a click of a button with uh, computer peripherals, you can tell by clicking the buttons how good a quality it is. I know that may sound stupid, but uh, those with plenty of experience with different mice and keyboards and etc. will know what I'm talking about. This is definitely feels like a high quality product and it should be for the price. It is a bit expensive. But if it's something you think you're going to get a lot of use out of, then it's definitely worth every penny, especially if you're a, a pro modeler. Then uh, obviously it's definitely something you want to consider buying. If you're just a freelance, or, or maybe not freelance, but if you're just a you know personal home uh, modeler, hobbyist, then maybe it's not for you unless you've got that kind of money you can spend on it. So with that, I'll leave it there. And I'll see you again.